KCRA 3 alert day across Northern California. We are tracking widespread power outages across the region right now, along with rain, snow and flooding. Tonight we have live team coverage for you with the conditions outside. Leanne Denier is in Sacramento, where thousands of people are currently without power. And Dirk Verdorn is here tracking it all from the KCRA 3 Weather Center. We want to begin tonight, though, with the mass power outages across Sacramento right now, according to the SMUD power outage map. More than 170,000 customers are in the dark. We have that highlighted here. Now, just 10 minutes ago, it was about 145,000. So that is just an incredible jump. This is the most outages that we have seen all night. This number has been growing since 730. Just zooming in, if, if you're a SMUD customer, you are most likely being affected by this 170,000 people. We have been in contact with officials. SMUD tells us there is no estimate as to when power will be back on. They say they are calling in crews from outside of Sacramento, though, right now to help. Now, almost all of the outages are due to high winds knocking trees into power lines or that wind just knocking power poles down altogether. Again, 170,000 SMUD customers in the dark on New Year's Eve. We want to bring in meteorologist Dirk Verdor and Dirk. The winds tonight have been causing a lot of issues. In fact, when we went out back, remember, we, we could barely even open the doors from the stations, how powerful it was. This is quite a storm. I mean, we've had unprecedented rain, and now we're seeing these strong winds and the damage that's being caused by these winds. So what's going on? Well, let's take a look at first some of the peak wind gusts that I was able to find. Marysville, Beale Air Force Base area had a wind gust up at the Air Force Base of 46 miles per hour. McClellan Airport had a wind gust up to 60 miles per hour. Sacramento Executive Airport, a gust of 59. Davis, a gust of 56. And Vacaville, a wind gust of 46 miles per hour. So those are some pretty strong winds. And they're associated with this area here, this line of rain that we have. So what's going on? We'll zoom in a little bit closer and we can see where we have some of the current wind gusts. And you can see some of the strongest winds are associated with the backside of this area of rain. You can see it's just right here in this range where we have out at Mather currently gusts of 37. We have 29 at the executive airport, Roseville 26 mile an hour wind gusts. So those wind gusts have tapered off considerably over the past hour. What's causing it is the center of the storm. Again, this has been a very strong storm with a heavy amounts of rain. We've had some wind, but those winds have really picked up as the core or the center of this area of low pressure is now working its way across the Central Valley. And what we have is that circulation going around this area of low pressure, and you can see how it wraps around and it combines with the north winds that are coming in behind this area or this cold front. And so as those converge together, it's intensifying the rain, but also we have that intensification of the winds in those spots. And so that's kind of the situation we're dealing with. And once this passes through, the winds taper off, but we still have a bit of a north wind. We'll be tracking more on that coming up in a bit. Now back over to you. Dirk, thank you so much. Because of that wind he was just telling you about, we have gotten several reports into our newsroom about downed trees tonight. We're really seeing the impacts of that wind in Sacramento as well. So take a look. This tree completely uprooted and landed on top of a truck. We'll make sure we show you that video at some point. But just an example of what we're seeing trees lifting and hitting homes and cars. We're seeing wind gusts as high as 60 miles per hour. That wind is knocking over not only trees, but also those power lines and it's blowing debris through the air. KCRA 3's Leanne Denier is live for us right now in East Sacramento, where we know a tree is caught in a power line. Leanne, what are you seeing there? right now. Yeah, so this is 39th and J. We're right by the hospital for a point of reference, and this is what we're taking a look at. Matt, we're gonna we're gonna move on a little bit closer. Sacramento Fire is here getting this road taped off because this is what we're seeing. This massive tree caught in the power lines here hanging a bit precariously. Um, we can see there is a vehicle just underneath the tree and the trees just sort of hanging there. So Sacramento Fire uh, just got this road taped off. We can see that the drivers are going to have to find their way around. They've got the yellow tape up here as fire crews are just over here um, to our left at this point. Making our way into the city from the county, we saw debris on the ground. We saw water over roadways. And then when we came into this neighborhood, the amount of debris on the ground really picked up and you can see it's just scattered throughout here. But the, of course, focal point of what we're seeing right now is this large tree hanging uh, across the roadway next to the hospital. And we've got that vehicle just underneath it. So again, Sacramento Fire is here. They got the roads taped off. If you can stay in, I would recommend doing that. Sacramento Fire, they were in and out. They have a busy night ahead. Um, 
as well. So this is what we're seeing here in Sacramento at this point. In Sacramento, Leanne Denier, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, and Leanne, thank you for telling us about the road closure. We could see someone behind you who was just having to turn around. We know an ESAC with the hospital there. That's really a hot spot. Uh, so, so just a great look at the conditions there. Kind of amazing to see that power is on at least at that area. Leanne, thank you again. We want to turn to a different live shot. Now we have our crews across the region. This is a live look at a downed tree near Arden Way and Exposition Boulevard. Look at that. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. Wow, it looks like that tree fell at least on or near multiple cars. We're giving you the zoomed out shot. This is right near the Arden Fair Mall. You can see how much damage there is from those fallen trees. Looks like that tree fell into at least two cars there. This is just incredible video from our live crew on the ground. I'm going to assume that Arden Expo in this area is closed right now. The road is clearly blocked. Expo is closed. We just got that word from our producer. Expo is closed near Arden Fair. Turning the camera to our left, you can see Sacramento police is there blocking off that roadway. Again, if you're in East Sacramento, downtown Sacramento, if you're in the Arden Arcade area, you want to stay home. These are just a few examples that we're seeing of down trees, and it looks like these two cars were driving as that tree collapsed and fell there from that powerful wind. A big thank you to our photojournalist who is out there tonight. We're not sure on the condition of any of the people who are inside these cars. We haven't gotten any word on that. As soon as we have some updates, we'll make sure to keep you posted here on the air. So we're seeing power outages tonight, not just in the Sacramento area, but really across the region. We are seeing them in the foothills as well. So this is a live look tonight at the PG&D power outage map. It is really just a mess from the Bay Area all the way to the foothills. Zooming in there, you can see a lot of orange, red, yellow. That means that there are thousands of people in the Delta. We know in Rio Vista right now, there is more than 5,000 people who are without power just in the Rio Vista area itself. Bringing the pg e map more up to the Sacramento area, we know that we're seeing outages in Wheatland and Woodland as well, Davis, Dixon. I mean, really every single area of our viewing of our viewing area is really dealing with this. Auburn is having some really tough issues as well. Wherever you see that orange, that means that there are more than 5,000 people without power. So again, the power outages are happening across the region, hundreds of thousands of people in the dark right now. The South Lake Tahoe area is also seeing really widespread power outages as well. So we're going to give you a look at the outage map from Liberty Utilities that covers a lot of the households there. So right now the utility says at least 4,000 customers are without power. We do have to tell you this is really an incredible update because just before this newscast, there was still more than 22,000 people without power. So it seems like the lights are getting turned back on, especially in the heart of South Lake near where all the casinos are and shops. Uh, this is really a good update but still tonight at least 4,000 without power. Right now there's no estimated time as to when power could be restored. From outages to flooding, officials have declared a state of emergency in Sacramento County. Some in Wilton are being asked to continue to shelter in place tonight. The Weather Service just sent a flash flood warning to residents near Kasumnis Road and Wilton Road due to an imminent levee failure. They are there. If you're saying if you are there, county officials want you to seek higher ground immediately. So we'll show you an idea of some of the conditions out there. This is video from our photographer Mike Carroll that he shot earlier today. This is off of Dillard Road near the entrance to Highway 99 in the Wilton area. The roads there are just a mess. This is when he was trying to make it back to our station. Again, now that night has fallen, we want to tell you to not get on the roads. It's really hard to tell the difference when you're looking at a road or standing water. So please stay off the roads tonight. You don't want to get stuck like this pickup here. That is really, really nasty stuff. KCRA 3's Leanne Denier was along Wilton Road earlier today speaking with county officials and residents there. We have a four acre plot and about three acres of that is underwater. We caught up with Renee Potris by Zoom late Saturday night. The bridge that could have connected us in person is closed. I actually went into Elk Grove to do yoga and run a few errands with my family. So it was really scary when we almost couldn't get all the way back into our home. Potris and many others in the Wilton area had to navigate closed roads as the water in the Kasumnas River and Deer Creek flooded. We've had a bridge in the Wilton area that has been uh, under threat of being uh, damaged by 
uh, storm waters and flood waters. Crews dropped rock to protect the bridge as the Kasumnis raged. Long-time residents, they know uh, the Kasumnis River, they know what it can do, and they have watched it for decades. You know, some of those families have been there for generations. They know how the water flows and what it can do. Poldras told us her family did eventually find a route home. The acreage is on a slant like this. Our house is here. And so we're able to, you know, we're able to stay out of the water. But if we were any lower, we would be in the water right now. Well, I'm just grateful for our Wilson community and that we're all trying to help each other out. Sacramento County, Leanne Denier, KCRA 3 News. In El Dorado County, our crews saw fast moving floodwaters as well. And this is just into our newsroom. The sheriff's office says evacuation orders have been reduced tonight to evacuation warnings in some areas. But we know that this flooding is just completely widespread across our region. We want to bring in meteorologist Dirk Verdorn, who has been tracking this. At this point, what are we seeing out there? Is this going to continue through the night? In some areas, we're still seeing the waters at their peak in okay. the Wilton Bridge area. The greatest concern that we have of that possible levee or imminent levee breach is where we're seeing some of the highest okay. water currently. Let's take a look at radar and it shows you that we still have some rain coming down at a pretty good clip in through the northeast corner of Sacramento County and on into El Dorado counties and even portions of Placer County right now. Again, this is that boundary where we have the winds all kind of converging and that creates the lift that gives us that heavier rainfall. And as we uh, move in just to the south of Grass Valley, we're starting to finally see that move out. This was an area around Grass Valley where you had a tremendous amount of water uh, flooding. Also in that area, Lake of the Pines, we're seeing that uh, also near Colfax and sliding in just uh, by Auburn is where we're seeing some of that heavier rain now starting to uh, decrease to more of a moderate rain. Granite Bay area had plenty of rain over the past hour or more, and we're seeing that rain shifting south. And again, we get into this area uh, just outside of Rancho Murrieta, and that's where we have have Michigan Bar and then you have the Wilton area, which is located about here. And so it's still raining in those spots. And these are the areas where we've been tracking the uh, rising of these rivers and creeks. Kasumnas River at Wilton Bridge, we're looking at uh, still at 75.88, which is at least a little over two feet above flood level. This was a record. It's never reached this level before. Uh, Scott Road, Deer Creek area is up almost two feet. It's gone down actually several feet so far, but that also was at an unprecedented level. Arcade Creek, American River College also still sitting up. In fact, it's actually been rising because we've been seeing some of that heavier rainfall in that region. Now, taking a look out at Michigan Bar, we've already crested. It crested at 16.83 feet. It is expected to continue to drop and drop below flood stage by about 2 a.m. We'll get a closer look at just how much more rain we can expect that area uh, coming up now. Back over to you. Dirk, thank you so much. Of course, on this weather alert day, now night, you can track this weather system all weekend to get the very latest weather and traffic updates sent straight to your phone. Make sure to download the KCRA3 app. We do want to remind you it is free to download.